Hey, what's happening, guys? Look at this. Another new printer from Creality. This is the Creality Ender 3 V3 KE. So what they've done here is they've taken their most popular product line, the Ender 3, and they've basically taken the shell of the Ender 3 V3 SE, and they've put clipper in it. They put a high flow hot end on it, a linear X rail, and they're trying to get a piece of the bed slinging high speed clipper 3D printers, something along the lines of like the Eligo Neptune. For Pro. So I haven't even turned this thing on yet. Just got it out of the box and got it put together. Let's get everything set up and we'll come and take a good look at this. And by the way, this printer was provided to us from Creality through Per Gear, and there will be a link down below if you're interested. All right, so here is everything unpacked from the box that you need to assemble the printer in the background here you can see the gantry with the uh, nice new K2 head here we have the main body of the printer along with the mount for the filament screw the filament sensor the screen and control panel filament spool mount and then over here we simply have some uh, screws so not too much in the assembly of this and uh, one thing also I noticed is this is using the same whoops wrong way the same type of extrusion as the Ender 3 uh, V3 SE uses this is this uh, wide in the front kind of narrow in the back kind of uh, extrusion here nice very long uh, umbilical cable here and it's labeled you can see has little labels on that one it says X there we go let's have some instructions here so there does not appear to be too much to do to put this together and that's what I'm going to do now everything seems to be going together pretty well so far I mean this is going to be a really quick install basically you're bolting the gantry on and putting the spool holder on I mean really it's not much more than that but I did want to cover this one part here this is the uh, filament detection sensor line that's coming down from up there it's really an extension cord basically but you do need to pass it through this hole you see it comes down it comes down through the center of this extrusion you need to make sure you pass it through the hole there so that when you put this together you're not pinching that off and you won't have any uh filament brake sensing okay so it is all assembled it took me about 15 minutes just most of that was just kind of going over some of the decisions they made in the construction of this so from what I can see so far this is your basic uh, Ender 3 V3 SE body frame and gantry. But they put a high flow hot end on it. But they are not using a volcano nozzle. It looks like a volcano nozzle. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, a volcano nozzle, instead of having one central hole for the filament to go down into, it has a uh, like three separate places so more filament is exposed to more of the hot brass this just has the one hole so you have a longer neck to get hot 
to apply the heat to the filament, but there's not more surface area. Is that good? Is it bad? I don't know. We'll find out. Um, so again, this is using this new uh, type of extrusion here. You can see it's much wider on the front than it is on the sides. But that being said, we only get we're only getting one uh, z-axis motor. We are, however, getting a synchro belt on top to link the two. This plastic thing here feels like it's going to fail to me at some point, as does this and this. They, they feel in incredibly flimsy. This belt I need to put into here. Other than that, let's uh, flip this thing up. So I can show you the underside. Come here. There we go. So the underside is a, a stamped piece of uh, sheet metal with no rubber feet. Why aren't there any rubber feet on this? I mean, what what we've got here is basically going to be a super fast Ender three because this is running Clipper. It's got a built-in accelerometer in the head, you know, all that kind of stuff built for speed, but why aren't there any, why aren't there any feet? Again, you can see the uh, way the gantry is mounted. Nothing wrong with that. Very strong. And then we have, uh, you see, we have this cable coming out the bottom here that is basically... The thing's going to be sitting on it. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a mechanical engineer, so I can't, uh, I can't say why they chose these choices, but, uh, they're definitely interesting. So the V3KE, like the V3SE, uses a load cell there under the bed along with a uh, CR touch or BL touch sensor on the tool head for completely hands-off setup. And that's what we're gonna see now for the first time. So let's power it up. Let's see what she has to say. will be good privacy policy okay now I need to put in my Wi-Fi info all right we're connected to the network time zone we are Eastern We are international. Welcome to the self-test pro process. Please place the printing platform. Okay, I guess it's going to go through its little thing now. We'll let it rock and roll.
All right, we're getting down to the end of this, so I thought I would just pick up the last part here. I'm using a G Tech filament. This is silk gold. We'll see what it looks like in the light. We do have a nice screen here. It took me a couple minutes to find the settings I was looking for. But they're under that menu there and adjust where you can adjust fan, Z axis, compensation, speed, and flow rate. I'm not going to go into uh, much more about the operating system on this today. We'll save that for when uh, I have a review in a week or so. But for right now, the printer seems to be working okay. It is uh, nowhere near as fast as uh, you know, for that one, for example. But I haven't spent a lot of time with it either. There are no LED lights on this thing at all, even though the uh, web interface has things for lights. Also, um, <clears throat> there is no camera or accelerometer installed, though both of them show up in the web interface. I'm sure that's something that Creality wants to sell you as a, you know, additional purchase. So we are at 93% here on our Benchy. Um, 47 minutes was the estimated time. We're going to come in probably right around there. Alright, so here's our Benchy, and it did take the 47 minutes they said it would take. So let's start by looking at the bottom, which looks magnificent. The back, again, I, I can never read what I'm supposed to say in there. I've only had one printer out of about 30 that did good there. You can see our, uh, whoops, you can see a little thing where the seam has all been put right there. Portholes look good. A little, a little bit of banding there. Um, there's some minimal stringing inside there. Other than that, you know, it looks phenomenal. Which, if you're going to send something out as the example for the first print and it doesn't look phenomenal, well... That would be a problem. So anyway, I've only had this printer since yesterday. We played around with it a little bit. Um, here are my, my impressions so far. Uh, the pros, I believe the cost is going to be uh, reasonable, probably under $300. Hands-off setup. It took six and a half minutes, and as you can see, it produced an absolutely perfect first layer. Uh, it has a high flow hot end, the same hot end that is used in the um, K1. So that's very nice. Cons now. There's no built in accelerometer. All right, I understand. Price. There's no LEDs for lighting. Again, price. There are no rubber feet on the bottom of this, and it has a hard metal plate as a base for this thing that is going to be rocking and rolling and moving around. That's not excusable. It needs rubber feet. And finally, and we're going to get more into this when I get to a review in a week or so. They've crippled Clipper, which is an open source operating system. That's what makes it fantastic, the fact that it is open source. And they've locked it down and crippled it. So you can't get to the uh, printer config file, which is basically where all of your firmware for a Clipper printer lives. But we'll get more into that next week when we get into the full review. As for the opening and unboxing... The printer does a fantastic job. I have no complaints whatsoever. I mean, for a, a first print, probably 45 minutes after uh, putting a knife to the box, it's pretty good, especially for a first print with a really nice quality like this. So absolutely no complaints there. And, of course, this G-Tech silk gold filament is, is beautiful. Printing at about 215 degrees, this was at uh, 200 millimeters a second and it took you know 47 minutes to print so a lot of tuning to go into there but we'll get into that 
All right, I want to thank Creality and Per Gear for sending this out to us for our consideration. And I'd like to thank you for watching these videos, because if you didn't watch them, why would I be doing them? All right, guys, that's it. I'm out. Peace.